I would like to thank you, Justice Jamal, for meeting with us today, and I congratulate you on this nomination. Personally, I am thrilled that you're here, and I'm thrilled about the work you've done in the Métis communities. I have a two-part question that relates to each other. I um, want to ask you about how the Supreme Court of Canada, which has recognized that Indigenous rights have largely been ignored, proposed to represent Indigenous perspectives considering the court's previous guidance on Canada being a tri-jural justice system, as described by Professor John Burroughs. And the second part of my question was asked by MP McGregor, and it had to do with the truth and reconciliation calls to action. And I think you answered it, but if you could weave both of those in, it would be good. Thank you. Could I ask for the first part to be uh, repeated? I didn't quite understand the, um, uh, and pardon me for that. I okay. didn't quite understand the, the uh, first part of the question relating how does, to. How does the Supreme Court of Canada, which has recognized that indigenous rights have largely been ignored, proposed mm -hmm. to represent Indigenous perspectives, considering the court's guidance on Canada being a tri-jural justice mm -hmm. system as described by Professor John Burroughs? Well, um, I think in response to that question, um, you know, what, what the court does is, as I said, decide cases that uh, come before it. What it really needs is, is counsel. It needs counsel to argue those positions and to, um, give it the, the uh, raw material uh, to address any case. And so whatever the, the court, as I said, doesn't really uh, go off on, on its own agenda, it decides cases and we, it decides based on the arguments. So, um, you know, it, it really requires lawyers, uh, Indigenous lawyers, lawyers uh, steeped in Indigenous law to educate the court uh, on the various issues. And so then that would then lead to uh, adjudication. So I don't know if that answers the, the question. That's the way a court decides the issues. It needs to be educated, it needs to be informed, and it needs to have the, case, the right case before it. But again, it then decides not on the basis of an agenda, but based on the evidence and arguments and the material before it. With respect to the um, TRC um, calls to action, I mean, I think it's an enormously important document. As a Canadian, I think it's an enormously important document. And I think uh, um, you know, lawyers, students, um, Canadians generally should read the uh, the volume that I've read the most is the, the or the read the, the is the the first several hundred page summary model uh, volume. I haven't read all of the, the volumes, but to 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 read that uh, volume is to be is to be completely humbled uh, by and to be um, about the the history the history of. Uh, residential schools and, um, you know, to understand uh, the experience of Indigenous peoples in, in Canada. So I think that's, and every time I listen to sorry, Senator, former Senator Murray Sinclair, I mean, I'm, I'm humbled. Um, you can't but be humbled when you listen to him uh, with his seriousness of a purpose and uh, his understanding, the depth of his understanding and his humility and his call for reconciliation. So as a Canadian, that's what I take from that. Um, I'm you know, deeply inspired by it, all, by it all. So, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's remarkable to think that the last Indigenous school closed in 1996. I mean, that was the year I was called to the bar. It's astonishing. Um, so, um, I hope that answers your questions. I'm, I'm just wondering how you will reconcile and implement the Indigenous rights and the truth and reconciliation calls to action within the work that you'll be doing in the Supreme Court. I agree so with you. We're, we're out of time, and uh, I don't think Justice Jamal can answer a question that may arise before the, the Supreme Court. Thank you. Um, 